Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of The Chest of Obscurity. And on this edition, we're actually going to go into PlayStation territory as, um, as I show you exactly what we're going to be playing. Jet Moto. And this was a request by Sheena Marie Bach, since she told me of the series, and I never heard of the series myself, and I figured it's a pretty obscure game for the PlayStation. And plus this game has one little tendency to do one thing that I played in racing games before, but they take it to a whole new level of it. They cheat. And they tend to cheat very hard. And a lot of product placement. I do mean a lot of product placement. You got Mountain Dew, K2, Axiom, and Butterfinger, yeah. Well, I have my, um, I do have, like, my, um, my loyalties to certain products, and my loyalty is to Mountain Dew. And of course you got your own, you have a best selection of writers you can choose from. You got Dakota Jade, Wild Ride, Miko. And Irons. Iron, Shannara, and that's about it. That's the Mountain Dew team. For K2, you have Shin, The Max, Gunner, Quick Jesse, Harris, and that's about it. For Axum, you have Blackjack, Tetsujin, Technician, Shiro, <laughs> I get the joke, I get the joke, and Stone. But for, for those who want to know, we go to Blackjack, well, card game. Tetsujin, of course, means Iron Man. And there was a and there was an old Sega game by the name of Tetsujin, but over here it was dubbed as Truxton. Tetsujin is also the name of um, the original name of um, Gigantor. For those who don't know. Um, let's see, not, not, um, technicians, but Shido, Shido is named after, um, uh, Masamune Shido, who, who made the Ghost in the Shell series. So, therein lies the joke. Then you got the Butterfinger team, which is comprised of Mace. Masala, Ario, or Aroyo. It's more like Aroyo instead of Ario. It's Aroyo. Bamba, Rhino, and that's about it. So, as you can tell, everyone has a bit of different stats like handling. Acceleration, mass, and lift. So since I'm going with Mountain Dew, 
I'm going with the one with the best acceleration. So let's go for a full season. And just because this game tends to want to cheat, well, cheats are included during this. <laughs> Yes, as you can tell, yeah, this game tends to cheat a lot. Look how far they are, and look how behind you be you get. You can ride this course however you want. What the fuck? <laughs> Track pottery? Yeah, of course. That's another thing about this game. The controls are very much warped. Because you have to use grapples in order to um, sort of control yourself. You know? Because as you can tell, this game doesn't handle like other racing games that I've played before. In fact, it plays totally different. I'm not lying when I say this because as I try to play this without cheats, it plays so unfairly, so therefore I am playing it with cheats. And yeah, of course this game does not, and I repeat, does not have any music outside of the outside of the main game. This game has its downside in which um, it has a very slim lack of control. Cause you gotta make sure you have control 
while you're trying to basically stay in control. And the angles are so wonky that really it's hard for you to actually try to stay straight, you know? Hey, look at that. One of those games I just don't really care much for because, A, for a racing game, it actually does, it is the controls that make or break the game, and this is one of those controls that just seriously does not handle well. Of course, I played worse games than this, like Ridge Racer Unbounded, but you know, that's much worse. So I'm actually going to show off a few of these um, tracks because, um, you know, why not? I have to give this game at least a little, a little bit of air time. I'm sorry, but as far as other games, as far as other racing games I've played on PS2 are concerned, if I really wanted a good racing game for PS, PS1 standards, Ridge Racer is definitely one of them. That's just, that's just messy, look at that. Now of course there are three of these games, but I'm only going to play one of them. I don't have to really do two or three. Because if one plays as horrible as this, I mean this is the first game. If it plays just as horrible as this, well then... I can only imagine two and three aren't well, well off. I mean, come on now. I played Daytona USA on my Saturn, and, and it was a much better game than this. But this is just totally unstable. not to actually do a good racing game, folks. Because there's... Because, you know, where, when it all comes down to is control. And these controls are like the absolute worst. I 
I can actually do. Plus, anything could hit you. I'm not, I'm trying. And really, how can someone just like, be like that and they're all broken up and shit? Fantastic game, but it's also a very obscure game. See, look at that. first place, so I don't even want to know. Well, that shitty ass performance of mine. You'll think, oh, hey! No. Just do a third race. Just to get it over with, just to see how it's gonna roll. But as I said, I mean I'll admit I do like the um the graphics for the cutscenes. I mean, they look like they came out of a comic book. Product placement is fine, folks. Got Axiom, Nestle. The fuck kind of chick one is this? What kind of checkpoint is that? Okay, this is one of those games I'd highly stay away from. I'm just 
constantly fucking up my shit all sorts of ways. Look at that. Not that I don't mind because the controls are this damn terrible. This is the high points of how not to actually make something like this. You don't make a you don't make a racing game with just you know names like Mountain Dew, Axiom, or even Butterfinger. Even though that's a Nestle brand. right about now. But then again, this game is not about performance or skills or anything like that. Oh no, no, no. This is about showing it off. But let me tell you, something like this, this was a big mistake. I mean, for its time, when the PlayStation came out, it was a big mistake. Because even though I'm okay with racing games, my concern is controls. If it don't handle well, it's just unplayable. If you don't have a certain kind of control, some kind of hold to your vehicle, and it just skids out of the way, this is bad. This is bad control scheming right there. Bad control scheming. It's like, I don't mind if I want to drift, if I press the shoulder buttons to drift, that's fine. Or if I, if I use um, my face buttons just to um, accelerate or decelerate. It just... It's just terrible. But anyway... This was Jet Moto for the PlayStation, brought to us by Sony Interactive of 1996, which was 20 years ago. And that will close up another episode of The Chest of Obscurity. Stay tuned for more game videos on my channel. Remember to, um, if you find something interesting that you like, please sub, comment, follow me on Facebook, and or Twitter and I will see you next time